this will I mean. okay guys let's uh, try this November 20 mechanics 41 okay let's go uh, this uh, I have to take a picture here okay so let's go on to this uh, first question it is a particle B of mass 5 kgs at rest on a smooth horizontal table I have to draw the table here quickly so imagine this is a smooth horizontal table. Here is a particle B resting here. This is zero meter per second. And then a particle A of mass 2.5 kg is on the table, uh, which is moving with a speed of six meter per second. So here is a particle A, it is moving at a speed of six meter per second, and it collides directly with B. Now the mass of B is given as 5 kg, the mass of A is given as 2.5 kg. In the collision, the two particles coalesce. Find the, okay, uh, so that means when they have collided, they, they will be one body now, okay? Let me call this body C now. The mass of the body C is going to be 5 plus 2.5, that is 7.5 kg and we have to find its speed okay so we have the law that the momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision so we have uh, this 2.5 times 6 the momentum of a plus 5 times 0 the momentum of b that is equal to 7.5 times v so this gives you V equals 2 meter per second. That is the, the velocity with which both the coalesced particles they are going to move. Okay. In the second part, it says find the loss of the kinetic energy of the system due to the collision. Okay, for this purpose, guys, you need to know that what is the uh, initial kinetic energy. Okay, so let's find the kinetic energy, which is the initial one. Okay. So that was half into m into 6 square plus half into m into 0 square. So that gives you 45 joules. Okay. That is the initial kinetic energy, which is going to be 45 joules. Okay is 45 joules and then we can find let me find the final kinetic energy the final kinetic energy is going to be half into 7.5 that is the total mass times 2 square so that is going to be 15 joules so you can see that there is a loss of 30 joule over here, okay, final minus. So there is a loss of 30 joule of the kinetic energy, okay. That is where your question ends. Now let's move on to the second question. A car of mass 1400 kg is moving along a straight horizontal road against a resistance of magnitude. Okay, so again there is a horizontal road. Here is our car, okay. So this is, there is a backward force on it, which is 350 Newtons. And the car is going in this direction. Let's, this is the forward force in this direction, okay. And then it says, uh, okay. Find in kilowatt, the rate at which the magnitude of the car is working when it is traveling at a constant speed, guys. Remember how to use this constant speed. That means it is uh, stating us that, you know, it is a kind of a equilibrium over here because constant speed means there is no acceleration. No acceleration means the forces, the forward force, the backward forces, they are going to be equal. So we can say that the forward force is simply going to be 350 Newtons. And we will find this power at this speed. So we have the formula for the power that is going to be force into the speed. And remember this force has to be the driving force, which is in this case 350 times, this is 20. 
So this is going to be 7,000 watts, which is going to give you in kilowatts, seven kilowatts, okay? And then it says, find the acceleration of the car when its speed is 20 meter per second. So we have to find the acceleration at this speed. And here is the power. Okay, when you have the power and the speed, that means you can determine the forward force through these two. So the forward force is going to be, uh, power is equal to F into V. So the forward force will be P over V. That is 15,000 over, which this is 20. So that is going to be 750 Newtons. Now we have this forward force and this is the backward force is still the same. Same, we have the mass with us and we have to find the acceleration. So that is our darling formula F equal to MA is going to be used here. Okay, and here F would mean the resultant of the force, okay? So the forward force minus the backward force that is equal to mass into the acceleration. So you have this 400 over 1400. That is your acceleration. You can simplify this to two over seven meter per second square. Okay. So from here, we move on to the third question. This third question is, uh, this looks to be an easier question on resolving forces. It says all these forces, they are in equilibrium. So let's quickly resolve them. So this is going to be 8 cos 30. This one is going to be 8 sine 30. This force, I'll be resolving it in this direction like this. So if this is 45 here, this is 45. So this is going to be uh, 10 sine 45 downwards. This is 10 cos 45 here. And let us resolve this force in blue. Okay. So you have this one is P cos theta. This one is P sine theta. Okay. So uh, we have resolved all these forces. We didn't need to resolve this 12 Newton force because it is always, it is already a horizontal force. So let us find Rx here and Ry. And we know that Rx is zero and Ry is going to be zero as well. Okay, Rx is going to be 12 plus eight cos 30. Then we have minus, sorry, that is sorry, minus P cos theta and minus 10 cos 45, that is equal to zero. So this is your 12 plus 4 under root 3, that is equal to P cos theta. Let me keep it here. Minus, uh, this is 5 under root 2. So you must have this value. Stash, what is this value, beta? P, P cos theta? Okay, thank you. So you must write this as long as you can write, okay? As much as you can write. From here we have this Ry. So we have upward uh, 8 sine theta, 8 sine 30 plus P sine theta. And there is one downward force that is 10 sine 45 and that is equal to zero. So your P sine theta is going to be five under root two minus four. So what is this P sine theta? Oh, you, you just kept it like this, okay. So this is your second equation. So what do you get after solving them? What is P? Yeah. 14 point? I think we should write this correct to one decimal place. So this is your P and theta. Okay. Okay. So now I know this. Okay. Let's move to the fourth question. Okay. The fourth question is um, a straightforward question on kinematics two, where you have to 
apply the calculus to get to the distance. Here is the distance. Okay, it says a particle P moves in a straight line. It starts from uh, rest at the point O on the line and at this, this, this. We're given the acceleration. So guys, when you have the acceleration, you integrate this acceleration, you get the velocity plus C. So you must have some information here to determine this value of C. Similarly, when you integrate this velocity, you will be getting the displacement. And again, there is going to be another constant here. Let me write this as C1 maybe, okay? So again, you need to have some information so that you can determine this C1 from here. So I have a line over, it says it starts from rest at point O. Now, starts from rest at a point O. Now these four, five words over here, are telling us that when the time is zero, starts from rest from O. So this means we get these three values. So this will help us to, de to determine these constants over here. Okay? Achha. So let us find this velocity first of all. So velocity is going to be the integral of, in fact, I, I should have written it here. Uh, chale khair. I think it's fine here and you have got an idea okay, how to determine this. Okay, so the integral of this is going to be 3t squared minus 18t plus c. That is your v. If you put all these values here, for t and v, you get that the c is going to be zero. So your velocity is going to be 3t squared minus 18t. That is the velocity, okay. Now you integrate this again to get the displacement. That is going to be the integral of this velocity. So this is going to be 3t cube over 3, that is t cube, minus 18t square over 2, that is 9t square plus c1. And again, if you put your v, sorry, t0 and x0, this implies that your c1 is going to be 0. So this displacement is going to be t cube minus 9t squared. Okay? Now we have to find the distance of P before it comes to instantaneous rest. Okay? So this means you have to put your V0. So you have to find the distance. Okay? That is X to be calculated when your V0. So indirectly you will find that time when V0 put that time into the displacement here. Okay, so let's put V equal to zero. So you get three. Uh -huh. So we get um, three T into T minus six equal to zero. So this means either T is equal to zero or T equal to six. Put this T six into here. So X is gonna be six Q minus 9 into 6. What was this? Hmm? What was this? Minus 1. Minus 108. Minus 108. Thank you, Bata. This is minus 108. And finally, since he was asking for the distance, so you have to give your answer as the distance is 108. You have to highlight this without a minus sign here. Okay? Acha bacho. And then we move to the fifth question. Okay, a typical question on the connected particles, a pulley segment. Okay, you have this 0.8 kg. I'm going to show this as 8 Newton. This is 0.2 kg. This is going to be 2 Newtons. There is one same string. So there is a tension T upwards. Here is a tension T upwards. Okay, so we have two typical equations because he's asking for the acceleration and the tension, okay? So we have to show that the acceleration is this. So guys, from this 0.8 kg, you have the equation, it is going to go downwards. So eight minus T, that is equal to 0.8 A. That is equation number one. And from the other particle of this, this is going to go upwards. So upward force minus downward force, that is equal to 0.2 A. That is the second equation. From these two equations, if you add them together, you get six equal to A. This is what you have to show. 
You put this back into any of the equations here, you will get the corresponding value of T. So let's put it here, T minus two, that is going to be 0.2 into six. So T is equal to 1.2 plus two, that is 3.2 newtons. That is the value of T. Okay? Achha, so this is a typical question. You, you can see this question many, many times in all these papers here. Okay, it says when the 0.8 kg particle reaches the floor, it comes to rest. Find the greatest height of the 0.2 kg particle above the floor. Now, this is an opportunity for you people to look at this question again. You see, guys, uh, this particle B, this particle with the mass 0.8 kg will hit the ground and this will not be bouncing back. Now, this will be moving here up to this. Let me clear this tension. Now, we don't need this at the moment. Okay. So, uh, this will be covering a distance of 0.5. And, you know, at that time, when it has covered the distance of 0.5, this particle would have hit the ground, okay? So now the string would be slack, and this would be moving under gravity like this, okay? Maybe it comes back to this. So we have to find the maximum height. So we have to see what is this maximum height over here. So for this purpose, you should divide all this motion into two parts. One, when the string is... Okay, string is torn. And secondly, when the string is <clears throat> slack. For the part of the motion when the string is taught, you have the acceleration that is going to be six meter per second squared. And when the string is going to be slack, this will be moving under gravity. So for the upward motion, the acceleration would be minus six meter per second squared. Uh, the, when the string is taught, the final velocity of this would be the initial velocity for oh, this stage, okay? Because it hits the ground, here is the V, this motion ends here, okay? And a new motion starts under gravity, so that would be the U, and, you know, until its final speed becomes zero. Final speed, is the, that is the point when it uh, it is the highest point over here. Okay, now so this is moving like this. So, guys, uh, first of all, let's find what is the speed over here. Okay, what is this speed with which it is going to hit the ground? And this speed would be same as the speed over here. So we have two a s that is equal to v square minus u square two into six into point five that is V square minus zero square because they started from rest. So this V square is going to be six. I don't need to find the square root because I know that that will become U square for the next part of the journey. So now here the string is slack now. So this would give me two into minus 10 into the distance we have to find that is equal to V square minus U square. Okay, and instead of u square, I'll be writing here six. So this is minus 20x, that is equal to minus six. This gives me x as 0.3. So guys, this distance over here, this distance x is going to be 0.3. So the maximum height obtained by this um, particle is going to be 0.5, this 0.5, then plus 0.5, this 0.5, and then plus 0.3 that is going to be 1.3 meters. Okay, I think this question ends here. Let me take this, this picture. And uh, yeah, this ends here. And we have two more questions. We can try them in the next segment, okay? So this is going to be ending here. Thank you very much. There's a minor correction here. This is, I wrote it minus six here. This has to be minus 10. Apologies for this, but you can see that I have used this correctly over here. That is minus 10. Anna? Thank you very much, Bita, for uh, pointing it out.